there we go. The recording function just popped on my screen. Okay. Um, a lot of angry people in the world right now, a lot of people with a lot of conflict, but here in Amherst, we're not seeing any of that. We're very lucky. We're not encountering any people that are coming to the counter or calling us or emailing us with issues. Knock on wood, it's been quiet. Um, hopefully it stays this way, but uh, I, I think, you know, the this town, I don't know if it's because it's votes predominantly one way and there's not like a 50-50 split between parties or what, but, you know, it's been it's been nice. People have been very cordial. People just really want to vote and there's been no nonsense. So I don't expect any in the polls, but we have upped the constable count in the polling places so that, you know, in case there is anything, we have backup. Okay, so with that, let me start sharing my slides. Okay. Can everybody see the slides? Is that a, do I see yeses? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Um, so it's myself as town clerk, Amber Martin as assistant town clerk, and Angela Hilliard, management assistant. And the three of us are trying to get all the, the work done for election day. Um, we have had help, which we're very appreciative of. A couple of people have been coming in and out of the office, helping us do some things. So it makes it possible to get the work done. Right. And our objective today in, in meeting is basically to give you all the information that you need so that you can ensure the voters come to the polling place, get the most efficient and courteous service possible. And that you are, you know, you know all of your facts and what to do and what not to do. Our polling places are the same um, since the last election anyway. The only change is that the North Amherst Library, Precinct 1A, um, that's new. It used to be the Zion Church for many, many, many years. And before the Zion, it was the Congregational Church. Um, but we have moved locations. It's pretty much right across the street, Kitty Corner. So we're now voting at the North Amherst Library. It's a brand new building um, or section of the building. It's a very nice space. So we're happy about that. And there's parking and bathrooms. So the facts, um, basically polls open at seven in the morning and they close at 8 p.m. Okay. And uh, you're, you're due to arrive if you're in the morning shift at 6 a.m. Gives you time to set everything up and get things going before the polls officially open at seven. And then um, any time during the day that you need to take a break or eat, just you know, as time allows, as you have a moment to break, please feel free to do so. Bring your food with you if you need to, depending on how long you're working. Name tags, you'll be supplied with a name tag, which you should be wearing so that voters, when they come in, they can identify who the workers are and not, not the voters. And conduct. So, you know, with all the opinions, like I, I mentioned earlier, um, election staff are there to be performing a function to the best of their ability and understanding, regardless of your personal feelings about a political party, a candidate, or a ballot question. Once you walk through those doors and start to work on election day, any personal opinions stays outside. When you're there, you're there to work, you are a neutral party and you have no opinions. Okay, this is how it is for us here in our office as well. Town clerk's office is a neutral zone. And, you know, regardless of what we feel, we, we don't discuss. That's something for when you leave your, your work. And being professional, it boosts confidence and increases voter turnout and enables registered voters to cast their ballot. You know, if a voter walks in and feels they, you know, if, if they are hearing chit chat about a certain party, let's say, and they're in another party, they're gonna feel a little nervous. They're gonna feel um, maybe threatened. So we don't want anything like that. We wanna make sure they're coming into a, a place that's a nice neutral area um, where they just feel comfortable voting, okay? So who does what? So we have um, four positions, the warden, the clerk, election workers such as yourselves and constables. So the warden is the chief election official they supervise all the election workers, you. Um, they're in charge of handling the inactive voters, any challenged voters, or any provisional voters. And they maintain order and handling of violations of election law. 
they're also going to deal with like observers. If an observer shows up, you would send them to the warden. Okay, and they'll they'll make sure they're standing in the right place and they'll tell them what they can and cannot do. Um, if there's any problem with the ballot box, like if a ballot jams, you call the warden or over if you need to, because they're gonna have the keys to the tabulator, they may have to use them. Okay. So the clerk, the clerk is kind of um there to assist the warden. They're the official record keeper of all facts relating to the election as required by law. They're gonna record any unusual happenings, like maybe the power goes out or somebody comes in and causes a ruckus, you know, anything unusual, they'll write it down in the clerk book. They complete the election record sheet and they're gonna read and record the ballot box register before and after the election. And anything the warden needs help with, they're gonna be there to help them. The election worker yourself. So your duties are assigned by the warden. So you're on the check-in table. You're the first point of contact for the voters. Um, you hand out ballots. You're also gonna, well, we'll get into that. You're going to assist voters in any way. If somebody needs help with something, you'll, you'll be there to offer assistance. There's one of the election workers will monitor the ballot box. So you'll be standing next to the ballot box slash tabulator, making sure that the ballot is going through the tabulator correctly and that it's been cast. Um, you're gonna help at the end of the night or during the day, sorry, counting any, um, well, I didn't put this on the list, but the early ballots that will arrive in the polling place or any absentee ballots that arrive, you may be asked to help in the casting of those. At the end of the night, you'll be helped or asked to help out with counting any unused ballots. You need to have a count at the end of the night. And then any other tasks as determined by the warden. And the constable's function is to preserve order and protect the election officers from any interference by anyone, okay? They enforce the laws relating to elections. And then they stand at the end of the line, the check-in line to announce the end of the election. They also can keep an eye on outside of the building, the 150 foot rule. If there are any signs that have been stuck in the ground, they can go out and pull them up. Um, we have a map in the warden's manual, which uh, shows where that mark is for the 150 foot line. So he can go and talk to the warden and find out where that is and then take a look and see if it's within that space. And for equipment, um, our DPW crew sets up the election the day before the election, and they're bringing over um, all the voting booths. They bring over all the tables and chairs. They bring over the ballot box, which is what the tabulator sits on. And they bring over the auto mark machine, which is the handicap voter assist machine. And then on election morning, the constables come here to town hall at 530 in the morning and they pick up the tabulator, they pick up the unmarked ballots, they pick up the um, election supply trunk, and they pick up the warden supply trunk and the tabulator, they bring it all over to the polls. So everything is there when you arrive. Um, the tabulator is an image cast tabulator, it's fairly new. And the ballots are placed through the tabulator um, you know, this is what the ballots are placed into basically in any orientation. And that tabulator has a really nice LCD screen. It's very large. So the voter can read if there's any error or any kind of instruction that's prohibiting that ballot from being cast. Usually it's an overvote or, or a stray mark or something, but it's going to instruct the voter on how to proceed based on that ballot. So that's the tabulator. The tabulator sits on the ballot box, that big black receptacle, big plastic thing. And um, that ballot box has basically two main big compartments and then one small side compartment. So the main compartment, which the sliding door on the side opens up to reveal is where the ballots all dump into and they are diverted based on whether they have write-ins or not. So the main compartment inside that big section is where most of the ballots go, but then there's a little section for the write-in ballots that holds them to the side. The auxiliary compartment, that's on the ballot box. It's a part of the ballot box, but it's a little like slot that gets opened on election day. And that is for any ballots that the tabulator won't read for whatever reason, no matter how hard you try to put that through that tabulator. So those ballots get put into that auxiliary compartment to be hand counted at the end of the polls. 
And then the AutoMark machine, it's a, um, it's a marking device. It doesn't tabulate. So um, anyone that needs to use this machine will um, either use the headphones with it or feel with Grail. There's um, Grail marks on it. But it marks the ballot for the voter, helps them to vote that ballot. And then the um, ballot will be brought over to the tabulator and put through the tabulator. And, you know, as an election worker, if you see somebody come to the counter to check in and you see that they have a, um, a guide dog or they're walking with a cane or, or something that indicates that they may need help, you know, casting a ballot, please offer the auto mark machine. Okay. Doesn't get used nearly enough. All right. And so before the polls open, so the warden's going to be um, assigning duties. So basically, um, physical setup of the polling place. So um, check in table. Um, but voting booths, all the equipment that should already be all in place where it needs to be. Because so we have a flow, we have maps and we have um, diagrams on how to set up the polling place. So that's done by the DPW and based on the best flow for that location. So that'll be all set for you. Um, then you're going to post information for the voters so that what you're gonna be posting are um, three specimen ballots, three trifold posters, um, and then at least one set of those specimen ballots should be posted no higher than 48 inches from the ground for ADA compliance for people in wheelchairs. And then um, the polling place gets unlocked at least a half an hour before the polls open, so it's 6.30 in case there's any public that wants to inspect the voting equipment. And the election officers open the ballot box to demonstrate that it's empty. Okay, make sure that we're starting with a zero count on the tabulator and zero ballots in that ballot box. And the auto mark machine should be set up and turned on and ready to be used. And one of you will be asked to vote a test ballot in that auto mark to make sure that it's working properly. And then what you would do after it's been marked, you write spoiled across the ballot and it's going to be recorded in the clerk's book and put into the spoiled ballot envelope. And this is a process that the um, warden will direct you on. So the ballots this time, there's one ballot and it's two-sided. Okay, there's a whole bunch of offices which we'll get into and there are five questions. And you, half of you here, maybe three quarters of you already probably already know because you probably already got your ballot in the mail and saw it, but we'll go over in case you haven't. So what's on here? So as we all know, the uh, electors of president and vice president, senator in Congress, representative in Congress. So this is the Mindy Dom, the Joe Comerford for our region, counselor, senator in general court, representative in general court, Clerk of Courts, Register of Deeds, Register of Probate, and five questions. So back to um, the ballot being two-sided. As the check-in people, um, please note that you know when they come to get the ballot, I remember this from past elections, is that we've had voters come after the election's over after they've cast their ballot saying, I didn't know it was two-sided, and they completely missed the second side. So you'll have to make sure you say, please note the ballot is double-sided when you're handing it out. We'll also have a sign um, stand for your check-in table that says ballot is two-sided, but it helps when you verbally say, here's your ballot, it is double-sided, okay? So you're gonna have um, two types of voters that show up to vote, unimpeded and impeded. And what I mean by this is basically um, people that have no, no issues whatsoever because they're active voters and people that are going to have to do a little bit extra work because they're inactive voters. Um, so the active voters is what you're going to deal with. You're gonna have the active voter check-in list and the inactive voters you'll send to the warden just, just automatically. If you don't see them on your list, send them over to the warden and they're going to follow the process for processing inactive voters. And a person becomes inactive just so you know if they don't answer their census form, their yearly you know, annual street list form. Um, or the subsequent confirmation postcard that gets sent out if we don't hear from them through the census form, then they be, they're be they placed into inactive status because we don't know they're there. Okay, so the process when they come to the check-in table, the voter's gonna provide the following information, their street name first, their street number, and then their name. And then as the election worker, you're gonna be required to repeat the information in a voice loud enough to be heard by any observers. Okay, so you don't mumble it. You just make sure you speak nice and loud and clear. Don't have to yell, but nice, clear voice. 
And then once you find the voter's name, you're going to place a check mark in the box to the right of the voter's name on your voter list in red pencil. Make sure it's in red. Um, the reason is that when the election's over, we're going to get that voter list and we're going to scan all the people that voted. And if you use black, it doesn't stand out and it, it can raise you know, more issues for us in missing names. So we wanna make sure we get everybody that voted. Okay. So um, again, if somebody needs help, they can designate a person of their choice to assist them or they can ask you or any other election worker to assist them and it's, it's, you can do that. Offer the voter, that auto mark machine, um, as we mentioned. And also when you're um, checking the voter in, after you've, they've read their name, you've sent their name back, you find them, you check them off. You'd say, here's the ballot, it's two-sided. And then the last thing you're going to do, you're gonna offer them a secrecy sleeve. So this secrecy sleeve is for the voter to carry their ballot to the voting booth and for them to carry it to the, mostly for them to carry to the tabulator so that people don't see how they marked their ballot. Um, the last election, we actually had a complaint from somebody who said, I wasn't offered a secrecy sleep. So we're like, we're sorry. I'm sure, you know, they just forgot, you know, you've, but with every single voter, you just get into a rhythm of doing the same thing. Okay. So two-sided ballot, check them off. Here's a secrecy sleeve if you'd like it. And then they're on their way. Um, so if you can't find them on your voter list and some addresses are tricky on your precinct, some addresses are done in a weird way in our voter registration system. So you, it's, you know, you may think it should be in one section of your voter list, but it's really in another. But um, best thing to do is just send them to the warden and it will get ironed out. But um, never send a voter away. Never say you're not on the list. I'm sorry, you must not be in this precinct. Just always send them to the warden. The warden's gonna have the inactive list, but the warden also has a laptop. And on that laptop is the whole town wide voter list. So it could be that that voter is in the wrong precinct. So the warden can say, oh, you're in 4B, you should be in 3A. So you need to go over there. Um, but the warden also has, you know, they can call us and we can do a statewide search here in the office and we can find out, oh, that voter is registered in Boston. They need to go to Boston to vote. Yeah, so the, so the, the rings are concentric basically. It starts small and it keeps getting wider and wider as far as the searching goes. But it starts with sending the voter to the warden if they're if they're not on your list. Okay. Now on your list, you may have some um, names that are bolded and have an ID to the left of the name. So these are people that have to show ID. And so they're required to show ID for a couple of different reasons. But basically, the Help America Vote Act, I don't even remember when that happened, like I want to say in the early 2000s. Um, it required voters to have ID when they registered to vote. And so some people that registered by mail and didn't provide ID or whose numbers couldn't be verified, they're gonna to have to show ID. So they can be an active voter, but they still have to show ID. Um, an acceptable identification is anything that shows their name and address, okay? If they cannot show ID, you have to refer them to the warden because the warden's now going to have to challenge them, All right? And any acceptable forms are, you know, a driver's license, a state ID card, a utility bill, a rent receipt, lease. Um, maybe they have a copy of their voter registration affidavit, any kind of printed ID which has their name and address on it that's like a government issue or a mail, um, paycheck, anything like that. And here's what the voter list looks like when you do see the ID printed on there. See the ID to the left there and then Mrs. Test, <laughs> but it's in bold from the other names. Okay. Now, while we're on the screen, um, do you see the X in the last um, entry there, Susan Sample? That X in the box, that, if you see that on your voter list, that shows that that voter voted already. So they could have come in and vote in person during early voting, or they could have returned their mailed in ballot. But that shows that we received their ballot. And now if they show up on election day to vote and you see that X, you cannot let them vote. They've already voted. Their ballot has already been counted one way or another. 
All right. Um, over on the right hand side of the screen, it says if there is an EV or AV next to the voter's name, which you see on the first one there, one person there. Uh, if you go across the line, you see the L that shows they're in the Libertarian Party, the box there to use for checking them in. And then next to that is the AV. So that shows that they applied for an absentee ballot. But all that means is that they've applied. There's no X in that box. So that means they got their ballot, but they never voted it and returned it. So they could have just destroyed it. And now they're showing up in person to vote so they can vote. Okay, the only reason they could not vote is if there's an X in the box. And you know what, let me, let's take a quick break right here. I'm gonna unmute people. Um, actually it says mute all, there we go. Hold on. Just to see if anybody has any questions since we're a little over halfway here. Like if you do just, you can use the um, raise hand function which is in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Um, let's see here, just looking. There we go. Okay, is it Lucia or Lucia? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, good. Uh, my question would be, couldn't also be a case, could it be a case that we still haven't processed uh, their mail-in ballot? So they kind of show up, they may have voted on, you know, they may have Brent sent in an absentee ballot and we didn't know, we don't know, or they forgot that they already sent it, you know. So uh, that's a great question. So the only ballots that are not going to be processed on election day are the ones that are going to your polling place to be processed. So you're going to get a handful of um, early voted ballots to be processed, but you're gonna have a list with those ballots, so the timing, it all depends on the timing. So those ballots will arrive first thing in the morning with all of your election supplies, and you'll be processing those as time allows. But if you, for some reason, let's say it's um, eight o'clock in the morning and you haven't gotten to those yet, if that voter shows up to vote in person, you're gonna cross them off the voter list. So now when it comes time to process those early ballots, you're gonna be looking at the voter list so then what's gonna happen is you're gonna say that voter already voted and you're gonna reject that absentee ballot right on the ballot, voted in person and not count it. Okay, okay. All right, Joel? Yes, and providing assistance to voters, what if they ask about the question, one of the five questions, how much assistance do we provide to them? Do we have to explain the question in detail to them? No. No, that's a good question because I had that here in this office and I said, somebody asked me from the nursing home if I would go over and explain the questions. And I said, I'm not an expert on those questions. I, I'm. These are state questions. And there's that red booklet and we, you will have copies of that red booklet in the polls. Um, people have to come to the polling place prepared to vote. They have to know how they're going to vote. So you don't explain anything. They need to be prepared to vote their ballot so they have to know what they're voting on. OK, you can refer them to the booklet and say, here's the booklet, which explains, you know, what these questions are all about. But you don't offer any personal information because you don't know you could you could have misinformation and now you're passing that on. OK. okay. All right. Does anyone else have any questions at this point? Yeah, Shirley. Um, can you hear me? I can. OK, Um, what's the you see in the example on this slide, the there's like a little line above the box with the X in it. What is that? Is it with the um the very last one that says Susan Sample? Is it the one right above that, which has an I and like asterisk? Yeah, what's the I? I means inactive. Oh, OK. And if you see at the very top, the header mm -hmm. in the middle, it says Ward Precinct and then Party Voted, AVEV Voter ID and then Inactive Date. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So that voter is an inactive voter. This is a voter list with active and inactive on it, just to show you all the different things. So um, that's the date that that voter went into an inactive status. This is an old voter list. <laughs> okay. But that's what that is. Okay. And Dorothy? We, um, I, this is just a question relating to something that happened uh, last year. We had somebody show up that was not prepared to vote, uh, didn't understand it at all. And uh, what happened was uh, she decided to leave and come back. Mm -hmm. um, 
So um, she wasn't checked off as having received a ballot. So that's the way it was handled at the check-in desk. That's Does perfect. Okay. And I was going to say, as long as she wasn't checked in, because the minute someone's checked in, they have to complete the process. It's too late at that right. point. Right. Um, if people are starting to ask questions at the counter before you've checked them in, I, yeah, advise them that they need to be prepared to vote. And if they're not, then they maybe should leave, find out what they'd like to vote on and come back when they're ready. Can I have a follow-up question with that? Can we sure. offer that red booklet to somebody who will take it into the booth? Well, yes. Well, yes and no, because a voter has five minutes in the booth. That's a long, big red oh. booklet. Yeah. It's a Good. lot of reading. Right. Good point. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So well, what, is, what is it, a yes or a no then? I would say no, because, um, it, I mean, if if it's one question, they think they can get it done within five minutes. I suppose you can tell them they have five minutes in the booth. And if they think that's enough time to look this over, fine. Um, but, you know, they can also sit off to the side somewhere and look at the booklet and not take up a booth space for somebody who knows what they're doing. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. You but know? Even if they, they could sit to the side with their ballot? Because you've No, no, no. Yet. You don't hand them the ballot yet. If they're not prepared, don't check them in. Give them the booklet, okay. and tell them to come back when they're prepared to vote. I got you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. All right, you're welcome. Okay, and there's no other questions. I see no other hands. All right, let's, we'll continue here. And I'm going to mute everybody again. All right, so um, spoil ballot procedure. So somebody gets a ballot and goes to the voting booth and votes and, and messes up. They come back to you and goes, crap, I, I screwed up. I know I didn't mean to do this. Um, they are allowed to have a total of three ballots. So um, if they spoiled their, if they, I mean, sorry, if they, if they messed up their ballot, you can spoil the ballot. Um, you would call the warden over. The warden's going to write spoiled on the ballot, put that in the spoiled ballot envelope, and then the, the voter gets a second ballot and then they can proceed to vote. So they can do that, like I said, three times. On their third ballot, that's it. Three strikes are out, basically. Um, they have to vote that third ballot, okay? And the whoever is stationed at the ballot box for those um, you know, monitoring that for the voters to put the ballots through the tabulator, um, know that the ballot can go into the tabulator in any orientation and once that ballot is put into the tabulator, if it's been voted properly, the tabulator is going to um, say ballot cast and the LCD display will show a green check mark. It's, it's good to have the voter wait until that comes up on the screen. That way they know their ballot has been cast. And also if they stick it in that tabulator and run away real fast, if there's an issue with that ballot, um, they're the ones that really need to be dealing with the issue because they need to make a decision based on what the issue is and not the ballot attendant, ballot box attendant. Okay, so have the voter, you know, wait, you know, say here's the, here's the tabulator, you can put your ballot in here, it's going to tell you when it's cast, give it a second, and then they can go off. So let's say the tabulator rejects a ballot because the voter did an overvote. So an overvote is basically, um, it's a vote for one race and they voted for two. That's an overvote. So the LCD screen is going to give the voter the option of what to do. So they can either cast the ballot as is, or they're going to get their ballot back. It's going to become a spoiled ballot. They're going to get a second ballot to vote that, you know, and you'll follow that spoiled ballot process. Okay. Um, we just talked about that. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say on that. So yeah, um, sometimes on the tabulator, if especially with the um, people who vote from home, there's no way to correct that ballot. So you're getting a ballot as is. If there's any issue with the ballots that go through the tabulator for your early ballots or your absentee ballots, let's say a voter marked their ovals with an X instead of filling in the oval, tabulator doesn't like that. So those ballots are going to be placed into the auxiliary bin for hand counting later. Okay, you might you may encounter that. Um, what else? 
just trying to think of all the discrepancies on the tabulator that you might encounter. But basically, if it's a voter standing there, let the voter handle it by reading the LCD screen and making a decision. Or if the voter is not there because it's a mailed ballot, you'll be placing any ballots that aren't able to be read into the auxiliary bin. Okay. And this is just a little scenario on what to do. Um, I think we talked about it already, actually. So if a voter shows up in, um, in person and they requested a ballot to be mailed, as long as there's no X in that box, like you can let them vote. But if there's an X in the box, their vote their vote has already been accepted. Um, you don't they don't ex uh, need to re complete a form. Um, that used to be the case a long time ago, but no longer the case. And again, if there's an X in the box, we've already accepted the ballot. They cannot vote. And there's that again, which we've talked about. And um, now the the ballots that arrive, we talked about this too. So the warden's going to direct this process as to who does what with the ballots that you're going to get in the morning. These are all the, so so a little background here. Um, you're not going to get that many, let's hope, fingers crossed, because we're going to be doing advanced removal and advanced processing like we did for the September primary with these ballots. So we're going to be, there's a lot more ballots. We're going to do this for three days. So any ballots that come in the mail that we currently have, um, on October 30th, 31st, and November 1st, we have teams of people who will be opening all of these ballots and placing them through the tabulator. We're not counting them, we're just getting a count of number of ballots that go through the tabulator. And on election night, I close out those tabulators and I complete the election after the polls close at eight o'clock and I get the registers that come off the tabulator, just like you do in your polling place. So. Um, as a result of us processing all of the early ballots for three days, anything that comes after November 1st until election day, those are the ballots you're getting. So I don't think there's gonna to be too many, but you will get some, okay? So it won't be overwhelming, but it will be something to do. Um, and also this election, you know, being a presidential, we've mailed out about 5,400 ballots, but compared to 2020, now 2020 was COVID, um, and you know, a lot of people didn't go out to the polls. So, but the difference is like we had about 8,500, 9,000 ballots that we dealt with by mail in 2020 compared to now. So there's a big difference. Um, so I think you're going to see a lot more people in your polls on election day, which is good because I heard a lot of you were very bored in September. Mm -hmm. So give, give you something to do. Um, but anyway, so this whole process of counting the ballots that you're going to get the early ballots the warden will direct you on who does what and how to how to do it. So you're going to be involved with that. And this gets done before the polls close at eight o'clock, but really as soon as you can during the day. Now the campaigning rules, um, 150 foot rule. So again, um, so you may see this uh, sitting at the check-in desk. You may be able to see out the door or, but you definitely will be seeing people walking through the door and what they're wearing. Keep an eye out for anyone that's wearing any kind of campaign material like on their shirts, um, coats, whatever that you can read that has to do with this election, anything that might be influencing the voter on how to vote. So, you know, make America great, hats, um, whatever that has to do with influencing a voter, you have to ask them to remove it, okay? Not allowed within 150 feet of the door of the polling place. So naturally, if they're walking through the door to vote, off it comes. Um, anything, anything that you see. If um, you happen to know you go outside for a break or whatever, you see signs that look like they're within the 150 feet, let the let the constable know, they'll pull them out of the ground. That. So, and again, I had mentioned earlier, the warden's manual has a map of your polling place. So it has the circle around the door, the entrance to your poll, um, polling location as to where that perimeter is. Observers, so I have not been contacted yet, but I'm sure they're going to be observers monitoring the polling places for their candidates. Um, they are allowed in. There's going to be, uh, that. what their purpose is, is to gauge voter turnout. They're gonna be listening to who's checking in. They're gonna be keeping their own little lists of who's come to that polling place. And a lot of these people request voter lists from me ahead of time so they know who's registered to vote in all the different precincts. So they're going to compare their lists against how many people are registered in that precinct. And they may, you know, contact the people who have not come out to, to vote to make sure that they get a good turnout for their candidates. So um, 
they are not offered anything. They're there on their own accord. Um, they're not offered a chair. They're not offered water. They're not offered electricity. They're supposed to be self-sufficient in what they're doing. All right. And they, there's a guardrail that gets placed. The warden will determine where that is, but it's outside of the um, check-in table, but close enough so that they can hear you say the voter name. They are not allowed to speak to any voters or to any of you. If they have a question, you send them to the warden. Okay, the warden's in charge of observers. And um, if there's any disorderly conduct, if you are, you know, see anything that doesn't look, that looks like it's disrupting the voters or any or any of you, let the warden know and they'll deal with them. And any questions at this point on on any of the things I just talked about? No, all quiet, no no hands. Okay. I know, same old, same old, nothing's changed in the law right now. Oh, wait, Maureen, go ahead. Um, I just wondered, can they bring their own chairs? Yes, okay. as long as there's space, as long as there's space. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. If they have a folding chair they want to carry it in, a camp chair, that's fine. Yeah, okay. And Joel? Unmute yourself, Joel. Can okay. observers take video? Video. So that's a good question. Why do I not have that prepared here? Um, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm this is one of the things that I um, cover. I send a letter to the wardens before every election, and I cover all the different things that might come up or we might, you know, have an issue with. And I'm just looking to see. Here it is. Um, okay. So, um, Two so it, this this falls under cell phone use. So okay. voters or observers, they're allowed to bring their cell phones in to aid them with their voting because they may make notes on their, you know, they may write <laughs> like a little task list on, I'm gonna vote yes on question one and no on two, et cetera. Um, but they cannot be disrupted by using the audio, talking or taking any photos of the ballot or anything else past the check-in table. So inside the guardrail, you cannot use any kind of video, any kind of, you know, anything. and. This applies to observers, this applies to the media, et cetera. Okay, so does that answer your question? So so the observer, what, if they're behind the guardrail, they can take video? They can take a video, but they can't take it um, of things that are inside the guardrail. Uh -huh. Okay, so they can take a video of maybe the check-in table. That's not inside the guardrail. Okay, or maybe people in line, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Jeff? So at Fort River, in the Fort River gym, I think we've always had chairs for the uh, the observers. Um, yeah, we're just considerate <laughs> in uh, this space. Okay. If the chairs are there, we can, we can let them use the chairs that are there, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're not going to. I mean, if they need to sit down and there's an empty chair, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Marilyn has a question, too. Okay. So I have a question. If we happen to know the observers, is it okay to talk about non-election issues? If you're, if it's, you know, if time allows, if there's nobody there, nobody's voting, okay. it's quiet. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. People have a lot of questions for Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Christina. <laughs> Bye. How are you feeling? Oh, go ahead, Christina. And you're, you're muted. Where'd you go? There you are. You have to unmute yourself, Christina. No, let me see. If I ask you to unmute on my side, does that help you on your side? No, you're still muted. You can, um, in the chat, you can put something in the chat if you want, if you're having a hard time unmuting. Okay, okay, all right, thumbs work. Okay, <laughs> all right, George. Yes, good morning. Um, good morning. I just wanted to verify again, you know, MAGA hats and things like that are sort of easy to identify, but if somebody comes in with something like a don't tread on me t-shirt, 
you know, I guess you would be referring that to the warden and the constable. In that exactly. Case. That's you know, interesting. When in doubt, let them make the decision on that. You've words. got it. Yep. That's, okay. that's hundred percent correct. That's a, that's a, I haven't even heard that one. Don't tread on me, huh? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, once again, the pine tree flag or the, you know, it means something to somebody and, you know, we could, that they, they could come in with a Confederate flag t-shirt or a Confederate flag mm -hmm. and everybody's got a different interpretation of what that is. Right. You know, right. so at that point, you know, that, it's a judgment call. Yeah, it's a judgment call. And I and I I'd, I'd let the constable of the ward and figure that out rather than me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And they may not even know and they may be calling me. Yeah. And then I might be calling the state because yes. <laughs> say, ah, oh, you know, yeah. But um, no, that's a good question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. And Christina, did you have a question that you were typing into the chat or no? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's see what else do we have. Um, so closing the poll. So eight o'clock, everybody's voted. The constable is going to stand behind the last person in line to make sure that nobody sneaks in after 8 PM. All right. And they'll announce that the polls are officially closed. And then, then the fun start, the fun, fun work begins. Um, the warden's going to let you all know what needs to be done. So basically taking things down, um, you're going to be counting any unused ballots. You're going to be counting the number of voters that have been checked off the voter lists, um, putting supplies away. And the warden and clerk, meanwhile, are going to be filling in all the uh, fun paperwork that they just love to do. Uh, not. <laughs> um, but So they need your help in getting things ready while they're tabulating. They're doing a lot of tabulation. They may ask you to... Um, Use the tally sheets and count any auxiliary bin ballots to be hand counted. Um, they're going to ask you to look for write-in votes on the ballots that come out of the ballot box, etc. And so, you know, polls close at eight o'clock, but you're done when all of the work is done at the end of the night. And depending on the election, I mean, the last election, everybody was done fairly quickly, which was amazing because it was a primary and there were three sets of ballots to go through. Um, but this one here, we're going to probably have a little more volume and I'm going to guess 9, 30, 10 o'clock, but fingers crossed for uh, an early night. And that's all I have. Just basically, we are so appreciative of everyone's part in making elections happen in this town. This particular election, we have been, we've had a lot of um, interest in people working. In fact, you know, we only have so many positions and we've had some people be disappointed that we didn't schedule them, which we feel bad about, but we're trying to give everybody a chance to work. Um, so just thank you. And, um, you know, any questions that you think of between now and then, feel free to reach out. Um, we're here all the time and, and happy to help. So if does anybody have any last minute thoughts, questions, suggestions, we're open. No? Quiet group today. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, we kept it under an hour. So, oh, Adrian, go ahead. Well, I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Um, absolutely appreciative of you, Susan, and your team and the town clerk's office for running a smooth election. And happy to know that we're not fraught with some of the issues that some have raised here, but will obviously, if they do show up, or will be in very minor numbers. And my heart goes out to a lot of the election workers who um, across the country who don't have it as easy as we do. And thank you for um, permitting me to work a, a yet another election season. Oh, thank you, Adrian. Yeah, and we, we really love, you know, we, we're rule sticklers over here. We like to make sure everything is being followed by the letter. And it, it just, when you hear about things, it's like, oh God, you know, just... <laughs> Um, we want to make sure we're above reproach every single time, you know, and, and we're so happy that we have people like you guys that follow, follow all the instructions and do what's supposed to be done. It really helps because not every community, like you say, we just heard of a nasty one across the state where somebody didn't get to work and then they retaliated, retaliated on the town clerk and something went viral, 2 million people, and it was all false, you know all AI generated, all false stuff. And it's just, it's, yeah, it's awful. So, yeah. oh, it's awful. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Yep. We have a great staff here. 
very capable staff. So thank you, Amber. Thank you, Angela. And thank you all. So thanks. All right. Sir. Well, right. It's a nice weather day on election day. So you're not dealing with rain. Okay. And um, any questions again, just let us know. All right. I think we're all set. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you.